Respond on fire three for a possible kitchen fire. 5100 South 144th Street. You pick up the phone and dial 911. A voice at the other end answers. But who is that voice? Who is 911 and how can they help you? In partnership with the cities of Auburn, Federal Way, Kent, Renton, Tuckwilla, and our contract agencies, Valley Communication Center is dedicated to providing consolidated emergency communications for the protection of the lives and property of the citizens we serve. We are committed to the highest levels of dedication, integrity, and professionalism while providing a positive work environment for our employees. We dispatch for nine police agencies, 13 fire districts, and King County Medic One. We are a group of regular citizens that have chosen to do this job because we want to help the people of our community. You've probably heard of the term first responder. A first responder is defined as individuals who in the early stages of an incident are responsible for the protection and preservation of life, property, evidence, and the environment. In that sense, we are the first responders. 911 public safety telecommunicators are the public's first contacts during emergencies, working behind the scenes in support of police, fire, and emergency medical personnel on the street. When you call 911, you are speaking to a well-trained, professional communications officer who is always ready to respond quickly and efficiently in a wide variety of emergency situations. Our personnel will work with you in your time of need to get you the correct and best help possible in the quickest amount of time. We are moms, dads, daughters, sons, wives, husbands, friends and neighbors. We're there in your time of emergency, morning, noon and night, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. How Valleycom works. Many people think that the call receiver and the dispatcher are in the station with the police and the fire units and that in order for a response to even begin, uh, they have to hang up the phone so that those people can go. But in reality, the call receiver and the dispatcher are in a different facility than the responders and they work together to get that information to the responders. So while the call receiver is talking to the caller, getting the information, they're putting that in a computer that the dispatcher then reads that information and in turn alerts the police and the fire department. So there is no delay, there is no need to get the person off the phone before help can be started. It's happening at the same time. Now let's break down the functions of the call receiver and dispatcher. We'll begin with the call receiver. The call receiver position is responsible for receiving incoming calls for police, fire, and emergency medical aid, and non-emergency requests from the public via 911 lines and other seven-digit phone lines. This is the first person you speak with when you dial 911 going on right now? Okay. Is it a male and a female? We are the voice, the first impression, and the bridge between you, the caller, and the response right, resources right, needed. We strive to work with you professionally and calmly in the midst of your emergency, demonstrating empathy and assuring that the emergency you are facing is being interpreted accurately. There are several things a call receiver is doing while answering a 911 call. When the call comes in, 
the call receiver is checking their mapping screen or map book to verify the location and referring to emergency medical guidelines or other resources for additional information. All of these tasks are performed while talking with the caller, calming them, while gathering the information needed for emergency responders. The call receiver will condense the information received into a clear and concise text and send it to the dispatcher as the information comes in. What language are you speaking? In the event that the caller does not speak English, the call receiver will utilize a dedicated language line service that immediately adds a third party that speaks the required language. This is Andrew for Russian. How can I help you? This is 911. This person will be on the same phone line with the caller and the call receiver to interpret as needed. This system is set up so that the proper language can be identified and interpreted quickly. Seven over seventy-eight. Go ahead. Now let's look at the functions of the dispatcher. Once a dispatcher receives the call from the call receiver, they review the information and determine how many and what type of units to dispatch. The dispatcher is responsible for all working incidents and other activities such as traffic stops, citizen contacts, or business contacts at their console. They create active incidents and non-active follow-up report type incidents. They will also be making multiple phone calls to tow companies, ambulances, citizens, and to confirm warrants. It's going to be at Riverview Park, 29. Valleycom interaction with emergency responders. Generally, police and fire personnel are dispatched to a call over the radio, which can be received in their vehicles and over an alert paging system in their stations. The call will also be sent to their MDC, or mobile data computer in their patrol car, fire apparatus, or medical unit. Regardless of their current activity, police and fire units are ready around the clock to respond to your emergency. When the notification from the dispatcher comes in, your emergency is now their highest priority. As the officer, firefighter, or medical personnel are en route, they listen for additional information that is being relayed to them over the radio by the dispatcher. Emergency responders will also read the information on their MDC that is being supplemented to the call by the call receiver. Okay, and he's being physical? What is, what is he doing? Occasionally, situations change as the call progresses. This may require the call receiver to involve additional units or agencies. Now let's look at how you, the citizen, can provide significant assistance to the call receiver. The caller can also assist in this situation by providing the answers to the questions that the call receiver asks. There's going to be a lot of questions asked, and they're asked for specific reasons and in specific orders. The call receiver needs to make sure that the right help is being sent, the right apparatus, the right resource, but also the right number of people being sent. Call receivers are trained to ask a specific set of questions in a specific order. Let's look at each of these in the order they will be asked. Incident location. It is critical that you know where you are, including the city and address, so the emergency communication center can be certain that help is sent to the correct location. If the caller gives the name of a business only, Safeway for example, there may be more than one Safeway within the city limits. Mobile phones can create additional problems. Calling from a cell phone does not automatically give us your exact location. It may only give us the general vicinity. Prepaid track phones, or government-issued phones, do not always have owner information registered with them and may not be traceable. If you hang up on the call receiver without providing the address, we may not be able to determine the location of your call. 
These last two examples are why landline phones are preferred when calling 911, because landline phones are generally associated with an address. Yes. Yes. However, regardless of limited information or the type of phone you are calling from, do not delay calling 911. 911 call receivers have different tools to help identify your location. Communication with the patient. Can I speak to him? I want to assess his breathing and get some further information. For medical calls, we will ask to speak directly to the patient so we can get first-hand information from the person that needs help. Hi there, this is the fire no one knows the symptoms you are experiencing better than you. It also today. gives us a chance to evaluate some symptoms, such as breathing. Are you having any pain or discomfort anywhere? Speaking directly to the patient will help us get the information we need okay. much faster than having the questions and, and answers relayed back and forth. Time of incident. Depending on the type okay. of call, the call receiver may request the actual time the incident occurred. How many minutes ago did it happen? Some calls, such as robberies, are prioritized according okay, to the time of actual occurrence. Okay, if someone was robbed two to three minutes ago and the suspect ran off on foot, we know the suspect can't be that far away and is probably okay, still in the vicinity. In if the crime occurred a half hour ago, the odds of the suspect still being in the area are generally low. This helps us determine how many officers are needed. Type of call. The call receiver will ask for specifics about the type of incident. North of or south of this will help determine who to send and will assist the call receiver in tailoring the line of questioning to the nature of okay. the incident. It will also establish the, the level of response. Side of the road. Are weapons involved? Emergency responder and citizen safety is the primary concern for the public safety dispatcher and call receiver. If an officer is en route to a routine incident and the call receiver receives information that a weapon, such as a gun okay. or a knife, does, is involved, the response procedure will change for the call receiver, dispatcher, and responding unit by providing more support. Okay, I want you to stay on the phone with me, okay? I want a brief description of the man. What race is he? The call receiver will keep the caller on the line as they are the eyes to what is currently happening at the scene. Emergency personnel entrust their safety to call receivers and dispatchers each and every day they are out on the streets. The information that is made available can impact the safety and accountability of the field units. Is medical aid required? Medical calls often require the quickest response possible. For some types of medical calls, the first 10 minutes is the most critical. Okay. Call receivers use specific medical triage guidelines to determine the level of care required for a patient. The nature of the medical problem will determine the level of response that is sent to the patient. The questions asked by the call receiver will help decide if enough help and the right help are being dispatched. Suspect information. Okay. I have a call the call receivers will ask for suspect information, line. including description, license plate, and direction of and travel. Direction this information is given to the responding officer suspect prior to arrival so they BMW can search for the suspect unknown. while en route to the call. This is especially important for in-progress calls where the chance to apprehend the suspect is higher. Okay, about how old? The call receiver will then begin to gather the description of the suspect from head to toe as specific as possible. The one detail you think is not critical may be the one piece of information that helps in capturing the suspect. As you give the information to the call receiver, they begin to paint the picture of the scene for the dispatchers so they can relay it to the officers. Reporting fires. Has it spread to the the call receiver will ask what is burning right, and how, how it started. They will ask if people are trapped are inside and, and what okay. their last are known location is. No. As with other types of your calls, the caller will be asked to stay on the line if it's safe to do so, in order to provide updated information. 
All right, you guys need to do whatever is safe for you. Reporting motor vehicle accidents. What address did the accident? The call receiver will ask for vehicle description, direction of travel, okay. injuries to occupants, and damage to vehicles. Are other risks or hazards developing? No. Okay, so the vehicle still there. The call receiver will ask additional information, as appropriate, what, what to identify go? other, less obvious threats. The call receiver will assess each call and recognize like all potential risks, such as the presence of hazardous substances, the potential for an incident to escalate such as a fight brewing or demonstration, or the potential for a fire to quickly spread. How can you be sure it's appropriate to call 911? 911 should only be called if you need a response from police, fire, or emergency medical personnel. Several examples of when to call 911 include a medical emergency, any type of fire, any crime, motor vehicle accidents or any other type of accident, potentially dangerous situations such as a child locked in a vehicle, potential for domestic violence, escalating arguments, any suspicious activity that causes you concern. It is important for the citizens of this community to understand that emergency response resources are limited. If a unit is out of service for a non-emergent type call, the person that really needs help could potentially have a delayed response. If you are not sure, do not hesitate to call 911. In situations that do not require 911, but assistance is still needed, here are some alternatives that may be used. A non-emergency direct telephone line to Valleycom is available. This number is 253-852-2121. Several police agencies now use an online police reporting system referred to as ePolice. ePolice is a system that allows you to submit a police report and print a copy from your computer. This online reporting system is used for non-emergent situations only. Types of calls you can report via ePolice are harassing phone calls, identity theft, lost property, theft, hit and run without injury, vandalism, vehicle tampering. Here are some additional alternatives to using the 911 system. For power outages, contact your utilities company. For traffic and highway information, call 511. For health and human service needs, call 211. Nine one one. Yes, there was a man at my front door trying to get in, and I do not know who he is. Okay, is the suspect still there, or is he gone? Yes, he's still here. I'm looking at him from my bedroom window right now, and he's trying to get in my back door. One William 15 and one William 16 for a possible in-progress residential burg. One William received all expedite. piece stating that there's an unknown male subject trying to open her windows and doors. He was previously ringing the doorbell and she did not answer. One William received. When you call 911, you are calling someone that is there to assist you. That person is on your team. They're working with you to help your situation right and ultimately me. bring a resolution to it. Right they understand you're calling 911 at a very stressful right, time and that your situation you are, okay? is urgent. And then we can get some help started for you. We all understand that calling 911 is a stressful time for you. You don't do it every day. 
So we are there to work with you and ask the questions to get you the best possible resolution. To get help there as quickly as possible, to keep you safe, to keep the responding units safe. Because so after all, you are our moms, dads, daughters, sons, wives, husbands, friends, and neighbors, just like we are. For more information or answers to your questions, see our website at www.ballycom.org. From all of us here, thank you for your interest in Valley Communication Center. 